Hey everybody, I'm Deanna Corby with Deanna Corby Dressage, and this is my special guest today, Nico! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it is my farrier, Brian Bear. Hello, uh, my name is Brian Bear. I'm an American Farriers Association certified farrier, and I've just started a YouTube channel called the Hoof, the Hoof Channel, and so we're doing this video as an introductory uh, video. <laughs> so I'm going to put up a card up above for you guys. And if you want to click that card, you'll be able to go directly to Brian's new YouTube channel. Be sure and subscribe and show him some love. He's going to be coming out with great tips. What is it, every week? Just every other week. We're going to uh, concentrate on, on just general hoof care tips for horse owners for, you know, everyday type stuff. And by the way, guys, I haven't just eaten too many donuts. I'm actually almost eight months pregnant. So, catching up on some YouTube videos is always fun during this time when I can't ride. If you guys want to see more about my pregnancy journey as a professional equestrian, I've got a full series. I'll put up a card. You can check that out. So, we're going to get started with today's video. 10 things your farrier wants you to know to keep everybody safe and happy and... Keep your farrier coming back so that he doesn't fire you because he's so annoyed by you. So why don't you start off, Brian, with telling us? Yeah, Nico's excited. Yeah, he's excited too. So yeah, um, you know, and this this isn't meant to beat up horse owners and say you have to have your horse boarded in a million dollar facility. Uh, Ninety percent of my customers are backyard horses. Um, you know, and, and one of the main things is just. Yeah, common sense with a level level surface um, to work on something that's out of out of the sunlight in a hot summer day. You know, if it's uh, snowing or raining outside, obviously we want to be undercover. Um, it, it, the le level surface just gives uh, a good picture. I can look at the horse's feet, get a good picture of the conformation of the horse and how it needs to be trimmed and shod, uh, and, and you know, it just is safer for for everybody for. Um, you know, having, having a good open area to, to work on. So are you telling me that um, being on the hill when there's a hurricane going on outside is yeah. not, like, ideal? Yeah, that's, that's, that's probably, probably a little no-no. Um, and also, you know, if you're on a hill and the horse is having to uh, face downhill um, and, and the horse has, you know, it's just not good because all the weight is on the front end of the horse. Oh, yeah, so good facing point. facing downhill. Yeah, um, yeah. That's, that's definitely not good for the horse either. So we want to make the horse comfortable. We want to make the farrier comfortable. So everybody can, can, the horse can cooperate more easily. I can do a better job. Um, so that's what it's all about is, is providing an environment for me to do a good job and for the horse to be comfortable. What do you think about, like, have you ever had people offer to bring their horses to you, like a new place, or meet you at a new farm? Like, what are your thoughts on, like, yeah. having a horse in a new space? Well, generally, when a horse comes to a new barn, I like to tell the customer, let's give, if an appointment comes up and the horse has just moved. So, you know, I like to give that horse a, about a week or two to get settled in. He's in a new environment, you know, there's new horses around, everybody's trying to reestablish a pecking order of the herd. So horses get pretty antsy when they go to a new new barn. So, um, and, and even when you're working on a horse, you don't want to have other horses running around. You know, yeah, where distractions, distractions, yeah. and, and stuff like that. Can that can get dangerous pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Speaking of dangerous, can I count on you to train my horse to stand? I can train a horse. Um, preferably you prefer not to, though. <laughs> well, preferably, you know. We're all, we're all on a schedule, so yeah. we all have appointments. I, yeah. I have a lot of certain amount of time for a trim, a certain amount of time to shoe a horse. So in order for me to maintain my schedule that day, um, it helps if all I have to do is come shoe the horse. If I have to deal with behavioral issues, well, that just, that just runs my day longer and makes my other customers have to wait. So instead of asking your farrier to train your horse, you might want to check out one of my other videos. I'll be sure and put up a card <laughs> so that you can teach your horse how to get acclimated to your to the space where your farrier will be working, how you can teach your horse to stand still like a perfect gentleman or a perfect lady. That would probably be time pretty well spent before your, your farrier arrives. So moving on, at farms we have a lot of other animals cats, dogs, what are your thoughts on dogs? 
Well, I, we're all dog lovers. I mean, most horse people have dogs. Um, but I, I've been in situations where I've actually, literally, I've seen dogs get stepped on. Um, I've seen dogs injure horses from being stepped on, and they're biting at the dog's foot, trying to get the horse off, the, off their leg. So, you know, just, it's good. It's, and that's another distraction when you have dogs running around. They're, they're going after the hoof clippings and stuff like that. Um, it's just really best to, to avoid that distraction and have the dogs put up. Good point. Do you have any other little tiny tricks, kind of like tiny hints, like, you know, like grooming your horse? Or how about hoof polish? What are your thoughts well, on hoof yeah, polish before you arrive? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I know there's some hoof oils and, and pony glam and things like that. Um, we want to leave that stuff off of the horse's foot when they're when they're coming up due for their appointment because all that stuff just it, it clogs the rasp my tools and, and stuff like that so yeah it's, it's messy easier. but it also kind of interferes with your equipment yeah, right yeah so. yeah it definitely it messes up the rasps and, and things like that and and uh so yeah that's definitely a leave the oils alone for that day you can do it afterwards when, when i'm gone <laughs> yeah exactly so how about cell phones well, you know, when a person's holding a horse, some horses do good in cross ties, um, and that's yeah, no like thing. Yeah, like how present do you want the owner to be? Well, it, it just depends on the horse, I guess. The ho yes, it depends on the horse, but also the owner can be an extra set of eyes for me. Yeah. You know, I'm concentrating on the horse. My main focus is on the horse, trimming his feet, getting a balanced trim on the horse, and, and getting him shot properly. So the, you know, there again, it's another distraction. I understand sometimes during the process. There's, there's, you feel like you're doing nothing but holding a horse, so it's easy to get distracted, distracted by the yeah. cell phone. But really, that's when things happen. You know, that's that's when, you know, if a car backfires going down the road, or you know, a tractor drives by, or something like that, and spooks the horse. So, really, you need to be that extra set of eyes for the farrier. If the horse is even all of a sudden his ears focus on something out in the pasture, you know, horses are running around out in the pasture. Let your farrier yeah, know you know that hey, my horse is alert to something. Just be prepared. You know, be that extra set of eyes for the farrier. Yeah, we all know how telling a horse's eyes and ears and facial expressions are. And if your horse or if your farrier is bent over looking at his work, the horse's hoof, then he can't see the horse's facial expressions, which are so important. Right. Um, I know I asked you this once about, you know, it's springtime right now, about like mud and wet feet like like when I go and get my horse I'm like well do I clean off his feet with water mm -hmm. and wash him down for you or should I just towel him off like what are your preferences on that I don't like wet feet and legs yeah um, it's just it gets me wet you know I'm holding on to the horse's legs got the legs in between my my legs and so it gets my pants wet it gets my shirts wet and everything else so um, really if, if you can Clean them off with water. If you have enough time to get them to dry out in between, that's fine. Um, other than that, just brush them off. Um, and towel. And, and towel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, something that I ran into with one of my horses recently, um, or my, my client's horses recently, the horse had an injury and was a little bit touchy about one of her back legs. And we told you ahead of time about that injury, how important is that kind of thing? It, it's actually really important because, uh, you know, an injured horse is kind of unpredictable. Um, and especially coming out of this wet winter we've had, a lot of horses right now have scratches or what we call mud fever on their heel bulbs. And that's the particular area that I'm actually touching a lot. So I need to be aware um, if that, because that will cause a horse to kick. Um, you know, if a horse is injured they, and you're fighting the horse, you need to know if it's injured so you're not, It's you need to know it's not a behavioral issue, it's an injury issue um, that you're dealing with. Yeah, so that you can, you know, make the adjustments that right. you need to make. Right. Um, and then, let's see, we have a, a few more yep. um, tips. What What are your yeah, thoughts on, just like... Any other things as far as x-rays following up on that, um, you know, or the injuries, if you have any x-rays, recent x-rays of the horse, if you, um, you know, if your fear is new to your horse and you have an old set of x-rays from a year ago or, or even, you know, with any time within a year, provide those to your, uh, to your farrier. Even if you um, have an injury and the, and the vet comes out and does x-rays, um, make sure those x-rays get to your farrier because everything we're trimming and shoeing a horse for is inside that we can't see. It's the bony column alignment that's we're, that we're looking for. 
So anytime you have a set of x-rays done, please make sure those get to your farrier. It just helps them verify what they're doing is helping the horse. Yeah. So like I said, uh, last tip we're leading up to. Yep. It's spring right now. Yes. And our, mine and Brian's, least favorite season is upon us. I call it the season from hell. <laughs> uh, summertime. What is your top tip? during summertime? Probably my number one thing on this whole list is fly spray. <laughs> number one thing on the whole list? Yep. Is there a favorite type of fly spray that you have? Um, I like either the indoor fly spray oh, or yeah, the Tri-Tech fly yeah. spray. Oh yeah, that's a good one too. Um, the Piranha works good, but is oil based. Um, so another, uh, just a note on fly sprays, um, don't use an oil based fly spray because it makes my hands slippery. It makes oh, all my tools yeah. slippery. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think about that. <laughs> so, that makes sense. Um, it's hard to hold on to things when your hands are covered in oil. So the Endure, the Tri-Tech, if you look at the labels, they, they're the same ingredients. Um, one, I think, is supposed to be more sweat resistant or something like that. But, you know, I see on average eight to ten horses a day. And in the summertime, after getting the Swiss in the face with the tail yeah. and horses jerking and yanking on you because of flies it, it really it wears your body down so uh, probably my biggest asset I have or use throughout the day is my body um, so anything to reduce the amount of times that horse is jerking on me um, just helps me do a better job you know obviously if, if, if I'm wore out and tired and, and struggling at the end of the day then that last horse of the day is probably not going to be as good as the first horse mm. of the day so yeah and we want you to come back <laughs> yeah. to the barn and not have to sit out for you know eight weeks because you're dealing with back pain or injuries right. from our horses that's right yep. so i think those are pretty great tips yep. top 10 tips a farrier wants you to know so that he doesn't fire you right um if you guys yeah. like this video be sure and click the like button don't forget to check out brian's channel what is it called again? It is called the Hoof Channel the on YouTube. Hoof channel. The Hoof Perfect. Channel. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, so uh, his information will be linked down below in the description section if you're interested in checking out his channel. And leave us a comment below and let us know what you thought of today's video or maybe even videos that you would like to see from the farrier in the future. Any questions that you might have, video ideas, we're all ears. So anyway, thank you so much for joining us today, guys. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.